Welcome to the Lady Charmaine live show. We have a very exciting show for you today. This show is going to be so good. So I want you to call your friends, tweet them, Facebook them, Instagram them, and you tell them to turn on the television right now. And especially call those girlfriends that are married or looking to be married, because we got some hot topics today that you don't want to miss. And today we're talking about unrealistic expectations in marriage and relationships. Now, you know, when you got married, you know, you thought you were marrying Superman, but you really got Clark Kent with the glasses and all. But we're going to be talking about that today. And today to help me do that, we have Joseph Bassett, supervisor. We have Dr. Anissa Mathis, pastor Dr. Anissa Mathis. We have employment recruiter Derek Miller. We have customer service representative Andrea Best. We have financial planner Otha Mobs, and we also have author and life coach Miss Aisha Curry to help me do that. Help me welcome my guests. Well, my first question is going to be to you, Joseph. Now, many people don't know this is actually my husband. So my mm -hmm. husband's on the show to help me do that. All right. And we're going to be talking about a lot of the misconceptions today that goes on in marriage and relationships. And Joe, I want to ask you, what is one of the biggest misconceptions that we find in marriage and relationships? Okay. Now, <laughs> when, <laughs> one thing that I had, a misconception that I had, was that it was going to be lingerie, mm -hmm. it was going to be wedding honeymoon mm -hmm. night over and over and over again, mm -hmm. but, but again, that's just not realistic, and, and that's something that um, just through our relationship and through our marriage, we found out that it, it's not, it doesn't always work like that. Now, what if I thought it was going to be Speedos all day? <laughs> uh huh. I well, think that was an unrealistic expectation that I had. What do you think? Well, well the, the Speedos, we, we worked that thing out. I mean, I, I give you Speedos for lingerie, but uh, just I, I think, again, most, most men, I, I, myself included, most men had that expectation that the, 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 the relationship, the sex, the intimacy would be there regardless of what's happening. But what happens, life happens. And I found out that just things happening. I mean, we got married and as soon as we, as soon as we had our first uh, honeymoon uh, togetherness, you were pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so right away, all of a sudden you're pregnant and hormones change, things change, your body changes, <laughs> demands change. And, <laughs> and I, I think the expectation that we were going to plan life just didn't work out. Right. Because we was actually on our honeymoon planning mm -hmm. children. Had no idea on the wedding night, I ended up getting pregnant. So plans actually changed. So you Real never know. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah everything. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Mathis. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think there's so many mis misconceptions when it comes to marriage? I think the, the major focus of that is television, mm -hmm. movies, books, and lack of communication. Because we just expect for the person to know what we're expecting without even saying it. You're the man, this is what I expect, you should know it. You're the woman, this is what I expect, you should know it. Such as what Bass just gave, Bass just gave, you know, lingerie, Speedos. <laughs> I shouldn't have to tell you. But I think that's, that's the, the major problem is the lack of communication. You know, being able to sit down with that person and say, this is what I'm expecting. One of the things that I was very clear with, with my husband, is I will not be cooking every day and I'm not ironing. Hey man, give me a So five. don't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, okay, then I guess uh, that won't be happening. I said, so this is all I got. You want it or not? You know, so he's still here, so I guess we're okay. All right. <laughs> now, Derek, you are newlywed and your parents have been married a long time. Mm -hmm. Do you have any misconceptions regarding marriage going into a marriage, or do you have any? Over the top expectations because of your parents' marriage. Um, correction, I'm not a newlywed yet. Oh, well, you're about to be about to get married. Yeah, August mm -hmm. 24th. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, 
But um, I, I, I was married before, but um, watching my parents, uh, my parents have been married uh, 43 years, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, and they still have fun, um, but they, they, the expectations are what they are. I mean, they, my, my mom takes care of my dad. My dad takes care of my mom. They don't pretend that it's always easy. Mm -hmm. But 43 years of marriage, um, I have that to look look forward to. I, I look at them, and they're both uh, retired now, and they go out on their little date still. Um, they take trips to Las Vegas or whatever the case might be, and they might just turn up and say, hey, send an email. We'll be out of town for a couple of days, you know, and, and things of that nature. So I, I like that. I like, the, I like watching my mom take care of my dad um, for his birthdays or whatever the case might be. And I'm like, wow, she's setting the bar really high. So my wife to be needs to make sure that she she's on that on that on that on that level because again my mom set it up here and that's you know we always want someone that's like our mom and um, that's what I've been looking for I think that's what I I've been blessed with thus far and so uh, I'm looking forward to that but my mom and dad have really to me they set it out and and they give me that that feeling that marriage still does. Um, it works, mm -hmm. you know. They have the baby boomer age, so I mean, I think the mindset is a little bit different back then. But mm -hmm. I appreciate that baby boomer ism. Right. If you will, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Now, Andrea, you just had a life transition about yes. ten days ago. Ten days. Tell, about that. <laughs> Tell us about your life transition, and Ooh, do you have any misconceptions? Divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Reaction, right? Wow. <laughs> now, did you have any misconceptions going into your into your marriage yes. or any great expectations? <laughs> that's, that's a cheerleader right there. Cheerleader. So, so, what were some of your misconceptions that you had going into your marriage? Um, you know, I went to high school with my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in high school, it was oh, I want to see you every day, and I want to hug you and live with you. And then we got married. It was like, oh, I'm living with you every day. <laughs> I mean, you know, when you get married, you think it's going to be rainbows and sugar fairies mm -hmm, all the time. Mm -hmm. And then you stop being a newlywed and you're together right. all the time. So, I mean, I'm not a, I'm still pro-marriage. I would like to get married again one day, but just, it's not, yeah, it's not rainbows and sugar fairies all day. <laughs> okay. <not. laughs> okay. So that, and then also, like you said, with the TV and you know, on TV, you see all the happy families, and in 30 minutes, they solve their episode. The kids are fed. Everybody's good. Everybody has a new job, and they all go off peacefully in 30 minutes. So 30 minutes. <laughs> then, you know, you're at 45 minutes, and yeah, you're still. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so, yeah, but I mean, you know, it's just, it's not, you have happy times and you have good times. Mm -hmm. But just for me, the other times, I wait the happy times. So, okay. yeah. Now, Otha, what do you think some of the biggest misconceptions are when it comes to marriage? Um, I think it's a lot. Um, I think as far as the role of a woman, as far as, you know, mm -hmm. cooking, cleaning, mm -hmm. um, ironing. Mm -hmm. um, in my household, my wife don't iron. I love to iron, though. See, that's, so that's the thing. I, I like that part. Um, but I think it's the, the, the typical roles that we see um, in TV and what other people tell us um, and, and what it's supposed to be like. Mm -hmm. So I just I think people got it messed up a lot of times until they really get in the grind and, and get with that person. They really don't know what it is. And I think it, it, it changes all, all the right. time. Now, Andrea, you are a life coach. What do you think some of the biggest misconceptions when it comes to marriage? Me. Oh. Uh, it's okay. Well, I think Aisha. it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I think everybody pretty much summed it up up here. It's, it's, it's about the same. I think it's the balance mm -hmm. between you, me, and us because, you know, me and my husband came from two totally different b backgrounds and I thought everything that I said makes sense. So mm -hmm. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. What do you mean? I mean, <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to be. What are you right. saying? And right. I thought he was supposed to just jump on and be like, yeah, that's right, you know. But it's not that. He didn't mm -hmm. grow up how I grew up. Right. I didn't grow up how he grew up. So right. it's about marrying the two as individuals and trying to really operate as one. Mm -hmm. I think we think because we have a commonality with one another that we're just going to be in cahoots all the time, and that's not reality. Mm -hmm. Can I add something? Yes. Yeah. Because what I, I haven't heard, um, I think one of the biggest misconceptions is 
is that you can't have fun anymore. Right. I think oh, that um, one of the, the misnomers is that we're married because you all hear uh, the ball and chain right. or mm -hmm. when I get married, I'm going to suffer. And that's a thought process. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, and, but I think you have to, you can have fun being married. And I, I think those who have been married 10, 20 plus years, mm -hmm. you have to have some fun in there. Right. Because, you know, if, you, if you're mean mugging all the time and sad and frustrated and negative, I'm sure that's not going to last. But I think one of the misconceptions is, is that you can't have fun anymore, right. is that you can't spice it up. And I think that uh, that needs to be a little bit, that needs to be talked about a little bit more because you can't have fun. Absolutely. You That's can't true. appreciate each other. Absolutely. Bit so I just wanted to throw that out. Well, one of our Facebook fan questions, the question was, what is the biggest misconceptions about marriage? And Delilah said that you will live happily ever after. She said marriage takes work and dedication. It should never be viewed as 50-50. It's each person giving 100% and not keeping score. And Steve right. Mackey said, one of the biggest misconceptions is a man cannot be happy with the same woman for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. Bless his heart. And a lot of people think that. A lot of men, they think, oh my God, I don't know how long, because there's so many women that's out there, so many beautiful women. I don't know how long I could be faithful to this particular woman. And La Shanique Young said, she said, my misconception was believing my husband would be faithful. She said, and the other was believing we would be one, as the Bible says. Wow. Is that a misconception? Because, you know, the church has the highest divorce rate of 54%. Wow. Is that a misconception in the body of Christ? That's a good question. So next, I want to know from each one of you, when should the roles in marriage be defined? Um, are they essentially the same for every marriage? When should you discuss them? Before you get married, or just define them as you go, starting with you, Joe. The roles in marriage. Um, what I found out is that even though roles are kind of, you go into it with the role in mind, roles change. Mm -hmm. And so just say how it's going to be beforehand. Because when I met you, you weren't Lady Charmaine. Mm -hmm. You were Charmaine mm -hmm. from Richmond, California. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so I had no idea the gifts and the callings and what your passions were to the point of where it is now. So my role for you as far as, okay, yeah, she's going to be like my mom, like Derek was saying, and she's going to come home and we're going to work and she's going to cook and I'm going to watch TV and we're mm -hmm. going to have some kids. We're going to put a pin right there, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> he found out real quick. Real quick. Real quick. I was not like his mama. Right, 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 <laughs> he was right. right. He married Charmaine and I don't understand. From Richmond. <laughs> hey, that's right. That's right. Because right. 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 we had a situation. You know how marriages have situations? Oh, yeah. We had a situation. Mm -hmm. We were newlyweds. <laughs> we were yeah. newlyweds. Yeah. And we both came home from church. And it was one of them hot days. Like today, yeah. when I'm good, 108, 110 mm -hmm. degrees, that's you're right. sweating. And you know how heat makes you really tired. Mm -hmm. We were going back to Sunday mm -hmm. night church service. So then we both said we're going to go and take a nap. And we were exhausted. And he rolls over and says, babe, can you get up and make me something to eat? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Pardon me? Do what now? I'm sleepy and you're sleepy. So I was taught in my house, we had go for what you know nights. So if you hungry, you fix you some meat. <laughs> See, I wasn't hungry. He was. <laughs> so, I mean, he'd get up and fix him some meat. But ever since then, we in it. Yeah, that was a misconception. 15 years. <laughs> That was a mess. <laughs> 15 a years this year, and he has not done that since. Isn't that yeah. <laughs> As I was saying. Okay. That was a commercial. <laughs> but again, with the roles that change, you have to adjust. I, I can't see how you can stay together forever for the next 100 years, 80 years, and not change. And, and I think as you adjust, and as we learn to adjust, mm -hmm. I support what you're doing, you support what I'm doing, and, and we just work. Uh, the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? Correct. So our walking together hasn't come with stumbles or me ahead, you ahead. We always are not in perfect step, mm -hmm. but we manage to get back to that by the, the, what we have in common is our love for, for the Lord. So um, to say that the Bible is not working, I think you have to make it work. You have to apply the word and really get in step with your spouse, even when you tend to pull or go one direction or another. Mm -hmm. So we've been managed, we've been able to do that for 
good 15 years yeah. and counting. So <laughs> praise God. 15 years. All right. <laughs> so Dr. Mathis, when do you feel the roles in marriage should be defined? I agree with uh, with uh, Joe. I believe that the role should be defined. You know, we come in with the conception, misconception mm -hmm. that this is what a woman does, this is what a man does. As you all heard me say earlier, I was clear that I'm not ironing. And to prove that, there's no iron or ironing board in our house. What? I'm just not ironing. <laughs> just, I'm just not doing it. And so that's just not, no, not in the house. That's why they have dry cleaners. <laughs> so, but <laughs> my husband still loves me, y'all. My husband still loves me. Bless his heart. But I think as you go along, the roles do change because when my husband met me, um, I was on a downtime. I was not yet pastoring and doing all the other trillion things that I do. And so in order for a marriage to survive and that relationship to survive, you have to remain, keep maintaining that friendship. Okay, this is what we're doing. There are times when he washes dishes and I don't. There are times when he vacuums and cleans and I don't. So it's like what works for you today may not work for you next week. But you learn how to trust one another and to respect one another to say, hey, I'm not locked into this is what a woman does, mm -hmm. this is what a man does. Now, me being a girly girl and a lady, there are certain things I'm just not going to do as a woman. I can change a tire, but I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. That's his job. All right. Now. I'm not going to do that. I'll put gas in the car, but I'm just not going to change a tire. I can do it, but, you know, I'm a lady. I'm a girl. I'm not going to do that. Right. So you learn how to adjust to the roles. <laughs> <laughs> You learn how to adjust to the roles according to what, you know, what needs to be done. And there are times when I am just dog tired because I've done so many things between work, between ministry, between writing and all the other things. My husband doesn't ask me to fix anything. He cooks on the stove or he uses the microwave. I'm good with that. So, you know, as life goes along in that relationship, you define the roles by what works for you and what your, your caliber of life is and what you're dealing with. So, yeah. Awesome. I just want Derek to comment on that before yes. we go. Yes. It sounds like you really wanted to. I was feeling you up here. Well, one of the things, <laughs> one of the things that I heard um, the pastor doctor say, um, <laughs> she says, I'm not going to do the tire changing. But what if he felt that way regarding ironing? If he was like, well, I'm not going to iron. So, you know, it, that becomes, in my estimation, combative off the top. Mm -hmm. um, when, when, when you say I'm not going to, and I'm just saying in general, I'm just using that. Oh, as yeah, that's a good when you say I'm not going to, mm -hmm. but then you say I'm, you know, I'm not going to iron, but he's going to have to do this. Mm -hmm. And I think right there, that sets this expectation, or there's this is uneven now. There's like a, a double standard that I hear as it relates to that particular situation. And so me, I think that they can. You're right. That's a good, good question. So let me go back and change that. If my husband asks me to iron, I will. Okay. And if I have to change the tire, I will. So let me let me correct that okay. audience. Right. But you know, and and that goes back to to the road, you know, changing the roles because there are expectations. There are times when he will ask me to fix a full course meal. I do it because he asks that. That's his request. That's what he desires. And he hardly ever asks to do that because it is it is a give and take, and you have to be willing to transition and make those changes. So believe you me, if it's it's necessary, I will I will do it. Thank you for bringing that out, brother. So <laughs> oh, okay. we're working on buying an iron, though. We really are. We really are working on buying an iron. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and when we come back, we're going to be talking about more of unrealistic expectations in marriage and relationships. And we have more Facebook fan questions when we come back. Hey, do you want to be a part of our live studio audience? For free tickets, go online to ladycharmainelifeshow.eventbrite.com and join the fun today. We're talking about unrealistic expectations in marriage and relationships. And I have a question for everyone on this panel, and this is my question. Does a Proverbs 31 woman really exist? And I'm starting with you, Aisha. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think that whole verse is unrealistic. Mm. Probably shocking for a lot of people because we grew up reading it. And when you go to church, they always say, be that good Proverbs 31 woman. But, um... When you read the Bible, you should always read who, when, where, why, how. And if you read it from the beginning of Proverbs, you see that it's a woman writing a letter to her son. And she's telling her son, you know, basically, like, be careful with a woman. They will hurt you. They will manipulate you. They will do this. They will do that. Mm -hmm. And then she says, find a woman such as this. And then she starts writing, you know. Get up at five o'clock in the morning, feeding the cows, the chickens, got three jobs, <laughs> changing the tires on the car. You know, it just gets like extreme. <laughs> she didn't want her son to leave from home. She wanted 
him to never find a good woman. But if you read it all the way to the end of the verse, it says, find a woman after God's own heart. And that's all that God wants to be is a woman after his heart. And then everything else should follow and, you know, follow into line. But if you go trying to be a Proverbs 31 woman who doesn't exist, this crazy woman, <laughs> mother-in-law, wrote this about her son because she didn't want him to leave from home. So don't kill yourself trying to be her because she doesn't exist. Wow. That, mm. I've never heard it explained like that. Mm. Hey, girl, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andrea, I want to know, do you believe a Proverbs 31 woman exists today? I believe she can exist, but okay. she's rare. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, rare. Like, because I believe there's a woman, because I know how it talks about how a woman should make her clothes and make the clothes for her husband and her family. And I believe if the situation allows it, then, okay, you can do it. Like, I would love to sit at home and sew, but I can't do it, raise two kids and work and go to school and come home. Got to make sure the dishes are clean because my kids don't care that I got to sew. They want food right now. Mm -hmm. And it's not possible. Mm -hmm. But if the situation allows it, so if I had a husband that would take care of everything, take care of all the, the money in the house and change the tires on the car and make sure the house is painted and the house is clean, then okay, I'll sit at home and I'll sew for you. I don't have no problem doing that. Okay. But I, I, no, no. Like, she's rare. She's out there somewhere. I don't know her, but. <laughs> hey, this is Dr. Mathis, <laughs> Reverend Doctor. Uh, you know, for the Proverbs 31 woman, my, my take on that is simply if a woman has a heart after God, she is going to be Proverbs 31 woman in the context of what is needed in her marriage. Simply put, he may not need her to sew, but he definitely needs her to cook or he may need other things. And because she has a heart for God and has a love for God, she's gonna do everything she can to please her husband and to make him happy. In that context, yes, in this day and time, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Joe, do you believe a Proverbs 31 woman exists? I'm looking at her right now. Wow. Wow. Smart answer. <laughs> wow. I do that. But it, it, it is hard. I see the work that you do and I see all that it entakes and the Proverbs 31 woman, as was mentioned, needs to be supported mm -hmm. by a man of character and a man of integrity, exactly. a man that can, mm -hmm. that could take care and do his role as well. Mm -hmm. um, all during the chapter, it talks about all the things that the woman is doing, but there's also a man and children mm -hmm. yes. that are calling her blessed yes, or that are making life easy for yeah. her, they're supporting yeah. her. And I think that's that's the part that's kind of missing. If you're unequally yoked and mm -hmm. you don't have that support, mm -hmm. then you're gonna feel like you're towing it all by yourself mm -hmm. and you're gonna burn right yourself there. out. That's, that's true. true. That's true. Derek, what do you think? Oh, I I I, I have to give him a high five on that one. <laughs> I it, it, it does. <laughs> it does. It talks about you know um, her children, mm -hmm. you know, blessing her and praising her, and oh. it talks about her husband as well. Oh. Um, and to be honest with you. What has happened is you have a, a, a lot of you have a lot of women who don't even really understand the scriptural or the biblical context of virtuous women. Mm -hmm. So you got it on a Facebook page, a Twitter <laughs> handle yeah. talks about virtuous, yeah. mm -hmm. and you you see, you see how they conduct their lives. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at that on the face, no, you can't be a virtuous woman. Mm -hmm. But when I think about a virtuous woman, I think about my grandmother. I think about my uh, my grandmother who just passed away. Um, I think about my mom, who has those those ex, those um, characteristics and attributes. Mm -hmm. um, so I do believe that she exists um, from a biblical standpoint. Mm -hmm. Because if you praise her and her husband loves her and gives her all of those things, again, it has to be in a biblical context. And a lot of people take it out of a biblical context. Mm -hmm. And so, again, I've never quite heard it like uh, my sister uh, explained it. I've never heard it like that. And so now I need to go back and, and read it again right. to, mm -hmm. to make sure uh, of that, but I, I've never heard it like that. And mm -hmm. so in, in that instance, maybe it's not, but in my mind, she exists mm -hmm. and I've seen her. No um, I'm sorry, that's the So, Otha, give me your opinion. Do you think a Proverbs 31 woman exists today? I think, yeah, I think she, she does definitely exist. Um, I don't think she exists 24 7, um, you know, 365. I think she's there. Uh, she has her moments. She has her moments. And I think that's, you know, with everybody. In the, and then also, going back, like you said, your grandmother and your mom, um, I, I, with that, I don't believe there's enough that's still around that's teaching that's true. That's true. that you know you can put it in text but if there's not a real life active person 
real life in the flesh showing what it's supposed to be like and look like, I think that's why it's being diluted and you don't see it as much. But is, is she there? Absolutely. I believe so. There was something also, the last chapter of Proverbs, when it talks about conversation is deceitful, mm -hmm. beauty is fleeting, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Yes. Yes. So a Proverbs 31 woman is a woman who fears the Lord yes, and right. is supportive of her family, and, and that every woman can be. Yes. Right. So there's possibilities in every woman to be a Proverbs 31 woman. That was my husband, y'all, yeah. that said <laughs> <laughs> Now, with that being said, Joe, do you feel that the husband is always the spiritual leader in the home? I think he is. Okay. Now, I think the position for spiritual leader is, is in him. They might not always be living up to that potential, but as far as if we were to look at a biblical context, he is the spiritual leader. He may be out of place, but he's a spiritual leader. He may not know everything, but he's a spiritual leader. And so that is definitely a role. And I think most men are challenged by that because they may not have prepared for that role in marriage. Um, and that's something that I think is, is something that definitely requires some work. You're not gonna get there overnight. You continue to grow in that role. I don't think you, you've arrived you grow in it, you, you learn to be more gracious, more forgiving, more loving, more, more just uh, compassionate. It's, it's a role that I think men grow into, but that is a role for men. And again, that was my husband. That <laughs> 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 good fun, good fun. And Dr. Mathis, do you feel that the man is always a spiritual leader in the home? I do, I agree with what Joe just said. One of the things that's uh, problematic for us in the church or in regards to that is that the church has 98%, 97 to 98% of women. Mm -hmm. And we are worshipers, we are praisers, we are emotional, we attach to God in that manner because we are more open. Where men are the linear thought of being logical. The problem is, is that when it comes to that, most men, as Joe said, are not positionally ready for that. You know, they're not ready. As a woman who has wisdom, you know that that's his role. He has to be the priest, protector, and the provider. It is your job or you should take it upon yourself to strategically pray until that happens. Mm -hmm. But to respect him in that manner, to gently and softly and with wisdom lead him to that place. When my husband and I got married, he knew in the communication process of courting that I was going to be pastoring. But he also understood and knew when I come out of the pulpit, I am wife. I'm submissive, submissive to him. He's the husband, he's the head of the household. That's it, that's all. And I respect that because that's how God meant for it to be and that's how we are blessed. So as a spiritual leader in the household, he has more than, more than enough come up to that place. But with prayer and wisdom of respecting him in that place, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Derek, I'm asking you the same question. Yes, um, the man is the covering. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a, a picture the other day, it was an umbrella and it had, the, it had God you know, and then it had mm -hmm. the man underneath that, mm -hmm. the umbrella, mm -hmm. and then it had the women, mm -hmm. uh, the wife, and the children. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so I believe he is her spiritual covering, mm -hmm. and she likewise is his spiritual covering. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, like my brother was saying, also, it's out of order nowadays. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I believe that's one of the reasons why the divorce rate is so high. Mm -hmm. It's because we're out of order, mm -hmm. and when you're out of order, there's chaos. Mm -hmm. And so I believe in marriages, we we haven't defined that, we haven't talked about the expectations mm -hmm. of that and so you go into it and you have this independent minded women some women that are the, the independents uh -huh. um, who don't want to be submissive right okay uh -huh. so now they use up the the authority over that and I know we're talking real we sound real biblical today in here <laughs> but they usurp that authority over her man and so I think that that throws it into total chaos again and so that's one of the reasons why I believe um, the divorce rate is so high because we don't understand those things. And when you pray together, you stay together. And when you have a praying man who mm -hmm. understands that and fears the Lord, mm -hmm. and you have a, a woman who's next to him, but again, mm -hmm. under the covering, uh, that's a powerful relationship there. Right. And I think I'm saying. glad you said that because I came from a, a single parent home. So, you know, my mother was the provider for our home. 
And so I had never had a male figure because I was never raised with my dad. So I didn't know what it was like to submit to a man at all. Mm -hmm. So for me to get married and all of a sudden, I got to submit and all, got to ask. <laughs> Say what now? What? I'm a dude. <laughs> 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 <That's not bad. laughs> we got to join bank work, account. Right? You know what I mean? Got to tell them where I'm going to go spend. You know, ladies, we like to just go buy. <laughs> when you see something in the store, you just want to buy it. I don't have to ask. You tell me, okay, we got such and such amount. And so I was like, well, you have your own bank account. I'm going to get my own bank account. So my money going to be my money. Your money going to be your money. You did that. <laughs> tell him, tell him, finish the <laughs> See, what happened was, what happened, I ended up having this vision. And I'm going to tell you, God is in support of the man being the head. I had this vision, and there were some stairs. And I was standing at the top of the stairs with my husband on the same steps. And before I knew it, I flew down at the bottom of the stairs. When I looked up, my husband was the only one standing up there. So I had to go into the bedroom and, and, and humble myself and apologize and said, okay, we can join the bank accounts. That was a humbling experience. Now, mind you, my account was already overdrawn anyway. <laughs> so it really wasn't too hard to say. <laughs> It was a real humbling experience. You got all these bounce check fees and everything else. <laughs> Can I just be honest here? Yeah. Like, I'm a realistic person. I tell on my own self. I know some of y'all was like that, too. Don't act like you wasn't. <laughs> but that's really what happened. And so I appreciate it because I'm a spender and my husband is the saver. You know what I mean? And, and I'll spend you out of house and all. We'll be on the streets, but we'll be looking good. <laughs> my wife spends money. Like it has an expiration date. Uh, like if she don't get rid of it real quick, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go bad. And so I, I pay all the bills. I coordinate the savings and, and dish out some, some fun. I know Derek mentioned about when you get married, you can't have any fun. I, well, that's what the expert, some people's uh, opinion. But what I found out is our fun is more planned than spontaneous. Mm -hmm. We have to budget for it. We have to say, hey, we're going to L.A. and we're going to take this trip and we're taking the kids for vacation and plan for it, save it, coordinate it. It takes more work than just being yeah. single and just say, hey, we're going to go off and just, yeah. you know, go to Europe for three days. We we don't do that, but we still have fun. Right. And it's planned. It, it just just Perfect. just yeah. we have to do that because if not, we ended up just working, working, working mm -hmm. and and end up being in a in a rut. And I think that's what gets people in marriage. You get in that rut in your routine, you can't get out and it seems boring. And everybody else, all the single people on Facebook telling all their <laughs> stories and you looking at them living vicariously through your single friends and you married. So that doesn't work. And I, I think too, you know, you have to get somebody who balances you out. And, like, and my husband, he balances me out. See, I don't look at a checkbook. And I don't balance one either. No, she don't. <laughs> I thank God for him because he's always looking at the account and letting me know what store I went to. See, <laughs> he's the watchman on the wall. So what you get at Walmart? <laughs> I'm like, dang. <laughs> he asked me, was that Subway sandwich good? <laughs> So I know, and then I'll be waiting for the phone ring because I know he's going to say something, but you need somebody like that. If right. my husband was like me, I mean, we will be in a homeless shelter. <laughs> <laughs> we will. Tell me why y'all homeless. We just addicted to shopping, can't stop. You know, so I, I, I appreciate my husband in that manner. But you need somebody to balance you out. No, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. See, when I met my husband, this is going to be a commercial break. When I, <laughs> when I met him, I didn't mean to take over the show. Did I take over the show? <laughs> See, when I met my husband, we met at work, and my husband was tight with his finances. And I'm glad, because one of the ladies told me, we wasn't even dating, and she made a joke in front of everybody. And she said, she said, Joe Bassett is so tight, he squeak when he walk. And then she... <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate that about him because I was very loose. And I think one of my expectations coming into marriage was that a man would be able to take care of the household. So he does that very well. So that was a very realistic expectation for me. Right. So I appreciate it. And on the positive. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to get back. Uh, I want to know, okay, from you, Andrea, do you feel that the man is always a spiritual leader? Okay. So. <laughs> back to what my brother Derek said. Um, it, a lot of things are out of order nowadays. They are. And in my marriage, we were out of order. 
because I was the one who getting up, I'm pregnant, getting up, getting the kids together, getting everything ready to go to church, waking up my husband like, come on, we got to go to church. Oh, the game come on at 10. I'm not going to go. All right, I'm going to leave you at home. Mm -hmm. And instead of me sitting here saying, come on, we got to go, you know, uh, we got to pray together. We got to be together. We got to focus together. So in that expectation, a lot of things are out of order because I do believe that the man should be the spiritual leader. Mm -hmm. But in my circumstances, it wasn't. And I'm not going to sit here and just let the rest of my family fall to the wayside because right. my husband wasn't. Okay. So like with me, I have two boys. I'm raising my boys up in the church. So then when they do get married, they'll know. But I do believe that he should be the spiritual leader and that in some marriages they are. But just in some cases, though, unfortunately, it's not. And the woman has to step up and handle it. Thank you. And when we come back, we're going to be going behind closed doors. Should the Christian Amen. bedroom really be boring? We're going to talk about it when we come back. <laughs> Lady Charmaine Live is sponsored in part by Savali Hair. For more information, go online to SavaliHair.com. Welcome back to Lady Charmaine Live, and we are going behind closed doors. Now, we know that it's a no-no in a lot of churches to talk about the word S-E-X, even though it's how we all got here. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about it today, and we're going to be talking about even unrealistic expectations in the bedroom. But I have a question for my panel right now. Should Christian couples read erotic novels like those Zane books in the very popular Fifty Shades of Grey that's been made in a movie to kind of help spice up their marriage? I want to start with you, Joe. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with um, some of those magazines and books. I mean, I don't read them myself, but um, I'd ha I have read uh, books previous and it's just you need to know the difference between fiction and reality. Uh, a lot of times what I found out in reading, you know, previous books is that they set the woman up, they set the situation up that everything is, everything is planned, everything is beautiful. You come home and, you know, the woman's in lingerie and things are happening and it just doesn't work like that in reality. So I just, I, I think there's, there's reality to be put in check. I just think those books, they set you up for failure if that's not what you, where, you're, where you're at in your relationship. So, Dr. Mathis, can you answer that question? Um, I think communication is, is the most effective. You know, I'm, I'm along with Joe. I mean, if that's what works for individuals, they want to read the books, you know, that's wonderful. But if you communicate to the person and tell them what you want and what you expect, or if they ask you, you give them the right information, or oh, you can get quite a bit of spice in the bedroom, quite a bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now we're going to go to some audience questions. Do you have a question? Yes. My question is for Aisha. Mm -hmm. um, I, how do you handle a husband with female friends? Oh, my husband right there, so he can vouch for this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had that problem in the beginning. My husband's from New York. He had a whole lot of female friends before we got married. And here's the thing. If they're not trying to be your friend, mm -hmm. there you go. Uh, they're not his friend. Mm -hmm. And so he had one particular female that was, oh, I'm just so happy you got married and all. But I just miss how you used to crack my knuckles. And so I knew right then. Yeah. yeah. So I knew, right, <laughs> I knew right then and there, like, um, she may not be looking at you as a friend, although you are looking at her that way. So I would say coming into it, unless they're trying to befriend you and really get to know you and respect your marriage, I'm not for it. He's, he's not for it. We have mutual friends that we've met since we've been married. And we create those healthy relationships with people. Amen. Thank you. Hi, I have a question for Dr. Mathis. Um, is it true that married couples don't think about divorce or is that a misconception? That's a misconception because married couples, Christian married couples, are the first ones to throw divorce word around in the bedroom over finances and arguments. They come in with that misconception, if this doesn't work out, then God will just have to bless me and forgive me, and I'm just moving on. So most Christian couples are no different from secular couples, unfortunately. I have a question for Joe. Joe, your question is, um, is it a misconception that once you get married, um, you can lose your single mentality or you'll begin to lose your single mentality after you're married? 
I think you should lose your single mentality before you marry. <laughs> um, but uh, I think, I mean, just my experience with, with my wife, uh, I've grown to, to see her and appreciate her more and more as we've been married. And so my admiration for her, my focus on her has increased because I, I just appreciate what we have. We've been together for 15 years or married 15 years, but I've been knowing her. We were engaged for three years prior to that. Yeah. And so I've seen God work in her life and my life, and he's blessed me because of her and because of my faithfulness to her. So um, I think that singleness should, you should be ready to get rid of that before you're married. But in marriage, I think it should just grow in admiration for your, for your spouse. See, I could vouch for that because how I wake up in the morning is him praying over my head before he goes to work. That's what actually wakes me up in the morning at three in the morning. So I appreciate that. <laughs> um, hi. So my question is for Andrea. Do you think that uh, single Christian women should attend passionate parties or Christian women at all in general? Do you think it's appropriate to attend those type of parties? <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's a problem with it. I mean, if you go, if, if you're having fun, it's fine. It's all on how you act after that. Because, I mean, you can be put into any situation, and it's all on how you act outside of the situation. Passing parties are fun. I've attended a few. And, I mean, it's good, clean fun. But now if it gets crazy, it is clean. I've been to clean ones. So, no. But, I mean, it's good. I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> what you got to say about right. that? <laughs> your opinion, because it's all on your face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. I mean, oh, boy. clean, I, you know, I, clean, I mean, really, what? Pure romance, pure. Right. Okay, well, maybe I don't know the levels or the yeah. Right, cause, party, because, see, party. that's, a, <laughs> see, that's the taboo clean. with it. No, that's the taboo. You only hear of the negative okay. stuff. I've been to one of a friend who recently got married. It wasn't no strippers and this jumping out and play things. And no, it was fun. We had fun. We, it was fun. It was clean. Yeah, you had games. It was, okay, we talking. It was like, you know, they had candles that you could taste and try and different things like that. Yeah, taste. <laughs> But, yeah. but no, but I didn't taste it off of nobody. I was like, that. Taste it off of it. So it's clean. clean. But if you, but no, but if you marry and you go home and do what you do on your husband, that's your business. You're gonna be like, baby, it's clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> baby, it was good. Right. I tried it out for me. It tastes good. All right. <laughs> question is for Derek. Uh, what are some of the things that you are expecting for your marriage? What am I expecting? Um, I'm expecting to um, be happy. I'm expecting um, the spirituality for myself to increase. I've always felt when I got married again that God would take me to another level spiritually. And so my expectation is that uh, with the praying woman that I have, that God's going to elevate me and her to a whole nother place of worship and praise and things of that nature. So that's my expectation. And I expect to gain a little weight because she cooks well, too. So. Um, but no, that's just it. It's a clean. So, well. so you mentioned that. So Derek, do you believe that Christians should listen to praise and worship music while being romantical? To me, I, I think that's kind of awkward. <laughs> Uh, because you to go to another level. music, yeah. <laughs> no, music is supposed to set a set a mood. Yeah. It's supposed to set a tone. Yeah. Okay. Um, unless you listen to maybe Mary Mary's Go Get It or something like that. <laughs> well, I, I mean it is. That, you go get it, right? But however, listen. Yeah, nice clean fun. But no, for real. I'm sorry. Um, I think that's awkward because. To me, certain music puts me in a frame of praise and worship. Okay, it, it's you know, and so that's why you have certain music that sets the mood in your bedroom, mm -hmm. so you can go there. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. Right? 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 Okay. And so, so yeah, so you, so it sets the mood, so you can go there. I think church music it, it's supposed to, it takes you to another at least, at least me. 
it takes me to another another place because how many of you have ever been in an awkward situation okay been in an awkward situation where you were probably doing something with that you been weren't supposed there, to do there. before you got married mm -hmm. and some church yeah. music came on <laughs> and all of a sudden it's like whoa <laughs> So it kills the mood, right? Okay. So that's my thing. I, 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 it would be awkward for me. I didn't mean to go on like that. But. My question is for Andrea. How have your expectations changed for your next marriage? Ooh, my next man will be God's man, first of all. Let me say that. Because that is the first thing. When I, <laughs> yes. when I um, date, I mean, that is one of the first questions I ask. What is your religion? Who do you pray to at night? And do you believe in God? Amen. Um, as far as, I mean, with me, you have to, I have a rule. You have to match me plus one. Mm -hmm. So everything I'm bringing to the table, you need to be bringing the exact same thing to the table plus one. Because being the man should be the head of my household. It's the head of my spiritual household as well. So I don't have to basically do all of that, meaning that my husband is the top and I am there to support my husband and I'm not the one that has to be the top and he's supporting me. Wonderful. You have a question? Yes. This is for Dr. Mathis. I'm going to go back to a question that was brought out earlier to the panel. We talked about if the man was not the spiritual leader of the home, that the marriage was out of order and we saw the consequences we're saying is a lot of divorce. So as a pastor, what would you do to counsel a couple where this may be the situation? Um, actually reminding them that the husband really is the head of the household um, and really admonishing her that her prayers, her strategic prayers for her husband to come up to the place positionally in a natural realm, what he is in the spirit realm, so that it can manifest. And once she begins to do that and grab a hold of that, they will see the changes that take place. And also making sure that that level of respect for her spouse is always there as the head of the household, as a husband. When you begin to operate in that manner, things change. As a matter of fact, I get less counseling sessions with them if they adhere to that. Yeah. Absolutely. I believe it. My question is for Derek. Uh, if you have children from a previous relationship and you're entering into a new relationship, what's your expectation for the relationship between your spouse and your children? Well, I think it's uh, very, very important um, that they first like kids um, because you have someone, some people who they don't like children. Um, and you'll find that out sooner than later because even if they're putting on a facade initially, um, it'll come out, you know, so I think you have to find someone or at least I, I did you want to find someone who has maternal instincts um, Again, I've always tried to use my mom as that 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 pattern of what I've been looking for But someone who has maternal instincts and it's not they're not doing it because you, you expect them to do that But it's just something that comes natural and you have to have um, if you have blended families, um, you have to make sure that you, you get along. Um, with the, they have to like your kids. The kids are going to be there. Yeah. And one of the things that you see now, nowadays is that some men and some women, for that matter, they'll put the, kid, the children on the back burner in order to make their, their, their whoever happy. And that's totally wrong. And again, we start talking about out of order. That's, yeah. that's totally out of yeah. order. And where do you find respect for a person who does that? I want to add to that, when you're thinking about blended families, when you're coming in, not only do you have to like children, but that adult that's coming in have to learn how to allow that child or those children to gravitate towards you or to build that relationship. In other words, you can't go in and force them to like you or force them to respect you as an adult, as a parent. My husband and I have blended children, although they are adult children. He allowed them to see him in the context of being my husband, my priest, protector, and provider, and the love and the respect that he has for me as a mom, as a woman of God, and as a wife. And eventually the relationship blossomed because he allowed them to see him as a husband and to also to allow them to, to transcend that whole respect level of although I am the husband, I still can be that have that relationship with you in the context we, we respect one another. And I think that's important because when you come in and, and try to force something that's not there, it will never happen. It will never happen. That's good. Yeah. Now we're going to be talking about the topic of um, Christian taboos behind closed doors. And I have a question for you. 
what is actual appropriate Christian behavior behind closed doors? Now, we know that there is a title in the church called missionary, uh -huh. and we know they go and they minister. <laughs> But is that always the appropriate position in the Christian home? Is it okay for Christians to experiment with different positions? Well, of I'll go. course. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead. My, <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, my thing is as long you, you marry, you do what you do. As long as you're safe and you're not causing harm that they don't want to themselves, do what you do. Long, you're not causing harm to yourself, to no one else. Do what you do behind you behind closed doors. That's your. That's my significant other. If I want to scream from the roofs, you right there with me. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're married. Right. You're married, and that's supposed to be the person that you are supposed to do. That's that's your that's your that's your spiritual being. You know, I just. If you're married, I believe you sh there shouldn't be any limits. What? <laughs> you think it's too loud. To her point, I mean, Christians are people too. Right. right. You have feelings and emotions and desires, and, and if you can't express that with the person you're gonna spend the rest of your life there with, you go. it's gonna stay bottled up, yeah. and then you're gonna be wanting that somewhere else. It's but even though you're fighting, go. there's the temptation always right. to say, "Okay, my spouse said no to this, never." And, you know, you want to be able to express yourself completely with the one you love. And, mm -hmm. and uh, what's behind closed doors stays behind closed doors. So, yeah. praise God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Elton. Uh, I can talk all day on this topic. <laughs> but, um, but for me, like, she's, like, 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 like everybody's saying, when you're married, I think that's what you're supposed to do. And I think when, you know, people say because you're saved and you're a Christian, um, that maybe you, you're in a box that you're supposed to act a certain way, which I agree to a certain extent, but when it comes to sexuality and having sex and doing what you do, right, okay, um, I believe there is no boundaries um, in, in terms of if you guys are in agreement with one right. another. Right. Because, you know, we, we, we are supposed to be, before we were saved, I still want to be the same person. So without giving y'all too much information, if I want to be free and do that, I did that before I was married, right? Just because I'm married, I, I can't shut that, per, that, that side of me out right. as far as, say, if I love having sex, right? Which I'm not saying I don't, but I'm saying right. I, I, I should be able to do that with my wife because I think that's when you shut that part out, then it, it explodes later and infidelity comes out because mm -hmm. I can't be who I was before I got saved with my, you know, wife in every position possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Now I have a question now, you know, when you have daughters and we all raise our daughters to be pure and to try to keep those images out of their minds. Mm -hmm. So now it's time for them to get married and their husbands is now expecting them to swing from the chandeliers, but we've, <laughs> we've, we've shielded them and we've guarded them all these years. How do you prepare your daughters for this intimate act because this is something we've tried to shield them from all these years guarding them from television guarding them from certain magazines so they don't put those images in their minds and then they get married and then the husband want to know why she's so rigid mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead Derek um, <laughs> the, uh, I think the way you teach them mm -hmm. um, first I think biblically how you raise your child, mm -hmm. um, what's the scripture? Um, train up a, train up a child. child, yeah. Later, you Once you train your, your daughters to be respected, first and foremost, um, mm -hmm. sex is a part of relationships. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be normal, natural. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that if you teach them and train them up that way, they'll always keep that in the back of their, their minds. But then I also share too that what you don't do hopefully in the biblical marriage context um, somebody else will do it mm -hmm. okay so you have to go in it with that expectation that you know hopefully you have saved it until then and now you can just 
turn it on. So now she just needs to now, where would she go to learn these things? Because we've taught them not to go into certain <coughs> stores, you know, with yeah. certain toys and the, those types of things. Yeah. So where would they go and to watch certain movies that you can pick up? Right. So where would they go to learn these things? Because I think a lot of times women, when they get married, <coughs> especially if they're saved and truly love God and they were raised in church, yeah. but they don't have those images in their mind. So how do you prepare them? You know, so where would they go and learn these things? They're behind mother. closed doors. <laughs> behind, <laughs> well, I, think, I mean, I, mean uh, I have girls in the audience, and we got to talk some more about this a little later. <laughs> but um, it's a natural part of who we are. God created us sexual beings. And, and I think with, with regards to the upbringing and, and instruction that we give our child as far as respect and respecting your body, taking care of your mate, I think now, like, you, you know, you go ahead and, and do what you, you know, it, what comes natural with somebody that you love and that you're passionate about and that you want to be with. You don't have to restrain yourself anymore. Now's the time that you got your license. You can go ahead and have some so clean fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, right. I, I got two boys. Oh, I'm sorry. I got two boys. <laughs> but all I'm saying is, I mean, well, just a quick thing, but if you're married, then that's it. Come, I want to try this. I want to try this. I want to try this. All right, let's go. Like, I mean, you're married. You should be able to try things and do things and keep it spicy. So, okay. I was saying when it pertains to our kids, sometimes we shield them and protect them too much to a certain mm -hmm. extent, yeah. and we have to watch what we put in them because what you put in is what comes in and it's what's going to come out. And sometimes we tell our kids, "Sex is wrong. Sex mm -hmm. is bad. Don't do it. Don't mm -hmm. listen." But you have to let them know, no, sex is good. Mm -hmm. It feels good, mm -hmm. but it's for this purpose. It's right, for right. to embrace in this way so mm -hmm. that when they get in that situation, they know, well, I was taught that sex is good and it is going to make me feel good, but only with my husband. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not to tell them it's right. bad and they shouldn't do it because of X, Y, and Z. Right. Because right. then when they do get married, they feel like, mm, why is he touching me like that? It don't oh, feel right. good. Yeah. And then you put it in their mind. I have a friend like this who's mm -hmm. been traumatized her whole life. Mm -hmm. She's been married and it's horrible because she grew up thinking that it was a nasty thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful too in that Absolutely. way, what we tell our children. Now should mothers teach their daughters how to be sexy and prepare them for marriage and the wedding night? Is it the mother's job? I think you have or that is it the father's job? It could be either one. I, I agree with thus far what has been said on the panel because the problem is is that the taboo for the Christian body of Christ as a whole is that as women we've always been taught only just to be missionaries. That's mm -hmm. it. We've only been taught to be missionaries, and anything beyond that is horrible, is dirty, is nasty. But when we're teaching our children about the context of doing things biblically correctly as far as sex is concerned, we should also deal with it in the context of what the expectation may be or what you can bring to the table as far as the bedroom is concerned. You know, And we also have to think about if, if it works for you and if it feels good and you want to do it, if it's not disrespecting you as an individual, then why not? Right. Because you're supposed to enjoy one another. This is a part of your jailing together. But that's one of the major reasons why we have such a high rate of uh, infidelity or adultery in marriages and divorces because she won't do it. Yep. Well, Sandra would. Yeah. And now we have a problem. Right. She won't wear it, but Cynthia will. So now we have a problem. He won't do it, but Mark Anthony will. So now we have a problem. <laughs> you know, so we have to think about that. Hey, you know, Mark Anthony, I don't know. <laughs> Mark Anthony. <laughs> well, I want to thank everyone for joining me on today. I want to thank my wonderful panel of guests on the show and my wonderful studio audience for joining me on the show. And I want to say thank you for watching Lady Charmaine Live.